All right, so we're going to read an article uh, that's titled Jelly Population Explosion, How Competition Can Affect Population Size. So as I've mentioned before, I really like to start off by doing a title pre-think. Jelly Population Explosion. So it seems like this is going to be about um, an increasing moon jelly population, just like ours, which is maybe going to be helpful to us. I also see that it says how competition can affect population size. Um, and competition, again, I'm going to, oops, it's not letting me add a note. There we go. I'm going to add it to this one. Competition um, is when two or more things are competing or, oops, competing or trying to get the same thing, right? So um, that could be like a sports competition um, or for food perhaps or resources, right? Anything um, that they're both wanting. So let's get started with our article and see what we can find out. Jelly population explosions. In some ecosystems, the population of jellies has increased so much over a short period of time that people call it a population explosion. Ecologists, fishermen, and many other people around the world are concerned about jelly population explosions. In some places where jelly populations are getting bigger, the increase in population can affect human activities, and the ecosystems we depend on. Okay, this seems really important. This is like the why we care, right? It, it affects human activities, um, and we use the ecosystems. So if, um, if you are looking for a reason to, to think about why does this matter, right? We have the selfish reason that changes to ecosystems do affect humans. Masses of jellies damage fishing nets, clog water pipes for power plants, and drive swimmers away from beaches. Scientists around the world are hard at work trying to understand why these population increases occur and how we can avoid causing them. To understand what can cause jelly populations to increase, a team of ecologists studied two ocean ecosystems near the southwestern coast of Africa, North Benguela and South Southern Benguela. Northern Benguela is off the coast of Namibia, while Southern Benguela is off the coast of South Africa. A strong ocean current divides Northern Benguela from Southern Benguela. This seems really important. I'm going to add a note here um, because lots of my students were thinking about how do the currents jelly. So maybe we'll find something out about that here. These two ecosystems are very similar. Both include populations of jellies, zooplankton, and fish, such as sardines and anchovies, as well as African penguins and Cape fur seals. Humans have fished in both of these ecosystems for a long time. So here is um, a picture that helps us kind of see. These are really pretty close, actually. The team of ecologists studying the two jelly populations analyzed data that had been collected over the last 50 years by other scientists and by fishermen. Based on the samples of jellies counted in each region, they determined that the jelly population increased in northern Benguela, but not in southern Benguela. Interesting. So I'm going to add a note here. Why is one of the moon jelly populations increasing while the other is not? We saw how close they were. They, they both um, have the current separating them. So there is a little bit of a difference there. Maybe it has something to do with the current. Today, the population of jellies in northern Benguela is much larger than has ever been recorded there before. Yet, in southern Benguela, the jelly popula population has remained relatively stable. As 
so interesting. They're so close to one another. In comparing these two ocean ecosystems, the ecologists found an important difference. Aha. Laws prevented people from catching too many fish in southern Benguela. Huh, well this doesn't tell me anything. What does this have to do with the jellies though? Because this is about fishing laws. In the 1950s, commercial fisheries began to catch large numbers of sardines and anchovies from both northern and southern Benguela. However, starting in the 1970s, people passed laws that limited the number of sardines and other fish that could be caught each year in southern Benguela. In an effort to protect the fish populations there, in contrast, there were no limits placed on fishing in northern Benguela. Without laws limiting the number of fish they could catch in northern Benguela, people caught huge numbers of sardines and other fish there, causing the fish populations to decrease. So I'm gonna add a note here. So that the fish populations are decreasing really rapidly due to overfishing. But again, what does this have to do with the moon jellies? Why did that affect them? And they, this is a decrease, not an increase. By the early 2000s, the fish populations returned to near normal levels in southern Benguela, but had dropped to record low numbers in northern Benguela. In this ecosystem, the jellies do not eat fish and the fish do not eat jellies. Okay, interesting. So that was my guess that maybe the fish would be a resource population, but the fish are not consumer or resource population for the jellies. So how are they related to them? So why, there's our question, why did a decrease in the size of the fish populations in Northern Benguela affect the jelly population? Let's look at the sardine population as an example. Jellies and sardines eat the same food, zooplankton. Aha, so they are in, in competition for their resources, right? Their resource population, we know jellies eat the zooplankton. It looks like the sardines also do. The relationship between jellies and sardines is called competition because they are competing for the same resource population. And there we have it, right? The energy storage molecules are going both to the sardines and the jellies. But these still are not connected. I don't see an arrow between them. When the sardine population decreased due to unlimiting fishing in northern Benguela, fewer sardines were around to eat zooplankton. So this helps me understand it a little bit. The sardines decreased, meaning less deaths in the zooplankton population. Interesting. And we know when there are less deaths and the same number of births, it doesn't sound like anything was affecting the births, the population will increase. So with fewer zooplankton eaten by the sardines, so less deaths, the zooplankton population increased, leaving more zooplankton for the jellies to eat. So if I, I could add an arrow here, this would be an arrow down, this would be an arrow up, right? Because it was increased, which then we know means an increased ESM, and that means for the jellies, an increased number of births. Interesting, so it's kind of like a domino effect that's happening. Having a larger resource population made more energy storage molecules available to the jellies. This allowed them to reproduce more. More reproduction led to more births and deaths, so the jelly population increased, just like we were predicting, right? So we had a decrease, an increase, which means increased energy, increased births, increased population. 
This is how the change in the sardine population was able to affect the jelly population. Even though jellies are not directly connected to sardines on the food web, a change to the sardine population caused the zooplankton population to change, which caused the jelly population to change. Just like we we're saying, kind of that domino effect. This is an example of an indirect effect the result of a chain of causes and effects, where one cause leads to an effect that causes another effect, right? So we've got our one, two, and three. It's kind of like happening over time. In Southern Benguela, the jelly population did not increase. Because of limits on fishing, the fish population in Southern Benguela was relatively stable. This meant the fish consumed the same number of zooplankton as usual, leaving the same number of zooplankton for jellies and not causing any change to the jelly population. In a stable ecosystem, biodiversity, which is the number of different kinds of living things in the ecosystem, also stays the same. Biodiversity is a measurement of how healthy an ecosystem is. This seems really clear. I didn't know this before. Um, so biodiversity is an important measure of health, right? So we can look at how many different types of organisms are in an ecosystem. When an ecosystem becomes less biodiverse, it is because the ecosystem is so unstable that entire populations are dying out. In order to maintain healthy ecosystems, people need to come up with plans like Southern Benguela's fishing limits to help keep ecosystems stable and maintain their biodiversity. I really like this because this is a solution. So this is a solution. It is something humans can do to help, which is, is really great, is to help maintain that biodiversity. Looking at lots of population data helped ecologists figure out what caused the jelly population increase. However, jelly populations are increasing in other ecosystems all over the globe. Since every ecosystem is unique, other jelly increases may have different causes. So we need to, to look at our specific evidence for our mean jellies uh, because it might be slightly different, but maybe now we also need to see if there's any competition happening in our moon jellies. 